Hey guys, it's Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist. Really excited to talk about hair loss today. Hair loss, definitely a common issue and we're seeing in very young patients like age 20 and up. I'm seeing young kids coming in with thinning hair where you're starting to see their scalp from afar. It's really devastating from a young age to when you're 80 years old. I see my older patients who are just devastated having hair loss later on. Obviously, we wanna slow down the hair loss process or even halt it altogether, but there's so far no magic bullet but we'll talk about methods that are possibly helpful when it comes to hair thinning, hair loss, hair shedding. First, we'll break up different types of hair loss and hair shedding and then talk about ways to manage it potentially. And even a special serum that I'm working with a brand as their physician advisor, Revela, and we'll talk about that more at the end and the technology behind it. All right, guys, so different types of hair loss. We recently talked about Jada Pinkett Smith and her hair loss issue. I think Jada has alopecia areata and that's just a type of alopecia. Alopecia is the umbrella term for hair loss or it's the umbrella term meaning hair loss is a symptom and not a diagnosis and under that we can break it up into different categories. As dermatologists we break up hair loss into scarring or non-scarring alopecia. Non-scarring alopecia we see more commonly than scarring. Scarring alopecia is a very serious inflammatory process leading to the scar and that can lead to irreversible loss of hair and that we can see with things like implantal pilaris, frontal fibrosing alopecia, discoid loop leading to scarring or cicatricial alopecia is the other name for it or scarring alopecia and those have to be addressed very quickly you know as you guys know lupus is an autoimmune condition and it's a very serious one people with discoid lupus you can see scarring on the face scarring in the ears scarring on the scalp and when it's on the scalp it can leave those permanent patches of balding I have seen people get better or reverse the hair loss when treated soon so I've seen patients in clinic who were good enough to make an appointment I see them clinic diagnose them or even do a biopsy to confirm the diagnosis and then I start them on treatment soon after with topicals, maybe injections of steroids and even an oral medicine called hydroxychloroquine to control it. Sun protection is huge when you have lupus and scarring alopecia because the sun can cause a flare of your lupus and for some people with lupus internally or systemic lupus erythematosus or SLE, the sun can cause a rash or even internal damage like kidney failure from the sun. So where your sunscreen if you have an autoimmune condition like lupus and see your dermatologist soon if you're seeing hair loss especially discrete patches of hair loss non-scarring alopecia we see more commonly like i said and that can be broken into alopecia areata which we talked about jada might have that causes discrete patches of non-scarring alopecia where you just have no hair in the area and that can be localized in one spot multiple patches of hair loss or complete loss of hair that's called alopecia areata totalis or universalis where all of the hair on your body is gone. Eyebrows, eyelashes, pubic hair, armpit hair, all gone. And that can happen in young people and adults. And that's when we really have to treat you with, potentially with oral medications. Topically, localized areas might respond to topicals, but the best treatment for alopecia areata when it's just like on the scalp, we do injections with a steroid called Kenalog. And your dermatologist can help you with that. Now, the most common hair loss I see would probably be stress-related hair loss called telogen effluvium after a stressor or an illness. If you're going through a, a significant grieving process, you lost a family member, you got sick and you're hospitalized. We're seeing after COVID infections, people losing their hair. And a lot of my patients during this pandemic, they had a lot of stressors during this time, whether change in jobs, loss of job, and they lost their hair. Now, you can also see things like change in hormones. And also as we get older, our hair follicles can miniaturize. And that's a thing called androgenetic alopecia in males or in females. I call it female pattern alopecia. And we'll jump into that now. All right, so androgenetic alopecia is due to hormones. We see this in males and females. When I see a female patient, yes, you can call it androgenetic alopecia, but I do label it as female pattern alopecia. The pattern of hair loss in males and females are different. Males, we lose our hair in a pattern where we have a receding hairline. You might see the temporal areas receding first, where you kind of have these little corners recede backwards, and then the whole hairline slowly moves back as well. And also the crown starts to lose 
hair in a non-scarring fashion. For females, the part will widen and you'll have a decreased density of hair. There are different treatments for it. When we go after the hormones, for males, we will talk about things like oral medications like finasteride orally or the other name is Propecia. Finasteride is used by a lot of patients, male patients, and they're doing fine. But I always talk about the risk of sexual dysfunction, erectile dysfunction that could be permanent. And we can't predict who will have that side effect. It might be reversible, but there are cases of it being irreversible, which is a serious side effect that I will definitely bring up with my patients before starting it. But I do prescribe it to patients who do understand the risks and a lot of them are just doing fine. And so far, knock on wood, I have not had issues of permanent sexual dysfunction with the patient yet. What we believe is dihydrotestosterone is causing our hair follicles to miniaturize and thus lead to hair loss. And so by blocking 5-alpha reductase, that's what finasteride does, we will have less production of dihydrotestosterone or DHT. And by having less DHT in the scalp, less hair miniaturization, less follicle miniaturization, and thus you can hold on to your hair more. The goal is always decreasing the rate of hair loss. If you get hair regrowth, that's always a bonus, but the goal is to maintain what you have. Now, women are also exposed to androgens or testosterone-like hormones. Even testosterone is circulating in a woman as well. And if you have too much testosterone or androgens, that can lead to hormonal acne. Usually, U-shaped distribution of acne, jawline to jawline, can have cystic acne on the chin, the jawline, be really stubborn to topical medications. And so dermatologists have to treat them with, say, like birth control pills and also a medication called spironolactone. Those two things, that dynamic duo of birth control pills and spironolactone can also help with hair loss because that is also decreasing the binding of androgens to your hair, causing hair loss of the scalp. Also helps with unwanted facial hair. So for patients with polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS, they have unwanted facial hair, the acne, the hair loss on the scalp. And so having that dynamic duo by talking to your doctor to see if you're a candidate, you can work on all three issues at once. Now, when you have spironolactone on board, my patients who are like late 20s to 30s, they're having hair loss and acne. They do very well on this medication, very well tolerated. It's, it's traditionally a blood pressure medicine and we give it for acne all the time, but it actually can help with decreasing the rate of hair loss. And a lot of my patients are happy on that medication. Just know that you will have frequent urination while on it. So stay hydrated because you don't want to fall behind, get dehydrated, get dizzy, and even have um, fainting spells too. So be very careful with that. And then birth control will always have to see if you are a candidate for birth control, but you never want to get pregnant while taking spironolactone. That is a teratogenic medication. You don't want to have a baby while on spironolactone because it is working on androgens, working on hormones in general. Now, how do we bring all these things together? You know, there are topical minoxidil that you could use for if you're a female or male. Topical minoxidil comes in different concentrations. If you're a woman, you can totally use Rogaine, but I would say go for the men's Rogaine because you don't need the 2% minoxidil. That's all based on labeling, the studies that were conducted. And so they had to put the label Rogaine for women had to be 2%, but totally fine to do the 5% minoxidil. And you can use it on a daily basis. Some people use it on a twice a day basis, but I just always caution my patients to not give up and to stay with it because once you start it, you have to stay with it for at least nine months before you see improvement. And you might even go through an initial shedding phase when you start off on topical minoxidil. That goes the same for the low level laser therapy or LLLT caps, those laser caps you put on, those are effective. And if you look at the studies, they're probably similar efficacy to topical minoxidil. But there are studies if you put them together, use the laser caps every day, your topical minoxidil every day, you might see better improvement and thicker, fuller hair. The laser caps, you also see an initial shedding phase in the first couple months. If you're on those treatments doing well, but you decide that you're going to stop, your hair could potentially go back to its baseline and you lose your hair back to where you would be if you weren't on it. So you're almost dead. You're almost tied to it. You're committed. Once you commit to it, you have to almost think that you're in it for the long run. There are other treatments you could consider like hair transplantation. Rosemary oil is another thing that people have been talking about TikTok, which there is a paper or two about how rosemary oil can be comparable to the efficacy of 2% minoxidil. So if it's just the same as 2% minoxidil, it probably helps, but not in a very significant way. It's definitely not the magic bullet of hair loss. But you know, if you're a female, you're on birth control, spironolactone, topical Rogaine, but you're doing the laser caps. When you add all these things together, you will increase your chances of seeing results. Now, there's another thing that you could consider by Revela. That's a company, an artificial intelligence company in Boston led by a PhD. He has a great team of scientists who have found an ingredient called Pro Selenel, and they made this serum for the hair that you put on daily and you can see faster results. Now, I'm a physician advisor. I'm working with the company because it's really neat evidence behind it. I've been really impressed by the way they've conducted their research and these are really quality 
qualified scientists who are very well accomplished. And so I really like their serum. Their serum is great. And I've used it for my own self and for also giving it to my employees in my office. And many of them are happy. They've given it to their husbands. And I even have my staff. One of my female employees has used it and seen improvement in just six weeks, which is pretty amazing. It didn't have an initial shedding phase either. The only thing with that is that you are committed to using the serum on an ongoing basis because if you stop, it could go back to baseline hair state as well. But the whole goal is to increase the dermal papillary cells in the follicle, increase the cell proliferation and lead to thicker, fuller hair with the hair revival serum. So that's another thing you could consider in addition to what you're using or just try that out and do some good before and afters and then share it with Revela's team because they're looking for some good before and afters with that serum. So then that's just talking about the androgenetic slash female pattern alopecia in a nutshell. You know, when you see me in your hair appointment, we'll be looking out for autoimmune conditions like alopecia areata, or if it's scarring, I'm going to worry about things like lupus, frontal fibrosing alopecia, lichen planal pilaris, you know, even syphilis can cause hair loss. So there's a broad range of reasons, you know, if you're on chemotherapy, sadly, you would have hair loss and that's called anagen effluvium, where you're going to have just halting of the growth phase completely when on a strong medication like chemotherapy. Now, biotin, I would say no strong evidence behind it. If you want to take it, maybe I see people having strengthening of their nail plates. If they have brittle nails, I've seen people taking biotin and seen results. But for the hair, I haven't seen much results by being on high dose biotin. And high dose biotin, I always caution people do not take more than 10,000 micrograms a day because you can really mess with your thyroid labs, your TSH. You can have falsely decreased levels of TSH when doing your labs. And you can be falsely diagnosed with Graves' disease or hyperthyroidism. Also, there are reports of people having their heart attacks being masked while on high doses of biotin where your troponin or heart enzymes won't be reflected truthfully when getting your blood drawn. If you have high dose biotin, you're at the risk of having your troponin's enzymes not being accurately shown on the test at a high level. It could be falsely low and you could be misdiagnosed for that heart attack and that precious time of going to see your cardiologist to get that cath done. It could be delayed severely. So high dose biotin, not worth it. But if you want to take some biotin mixed in with something like a supplement, a marine derived supplement, or like the shark cartilage, things like Viviscal, Nutrafol, those are great supplements that have like micronutrients that have different nutrients mixed in, some biotin, but not a lot. And those actually have science backed by them. There's some research papers showing that you can have results with it after six months of use. We sell Nutrafol in our office. We've looked at the data and we feel that our patients are happy taking that. So if you ever want to consider Nutrafol or Viviscal, both great brands. You can consider that in addition to what you're doing, topical minoxidil, laser caps. It is adding up to a lot of money. Just try and talk to your dermatologist and try to figure out what's the best use of your time because a lot of time, this is all very time consuming. Wearing the laser cap on your head between five to 15 minutes every day can be time consuming in addition to putting on your Rogaine, going to Costco, picking up that two pack of minoxidil. All these things you got to really factor in, is it worth your time? And so your dermatologist can help guide you on what kind of hair loss you are, you have, you're having, and what treatments you're qualified to use. Basic hair practices would be trying to avoid using a towel to roughly dry your hair. Towel wrapping or just pat drying is the way to go. Using a hair dryer on a low setting or a cool setting is preferred over the hot setting because the heat from the blow dryer or from a hair iron, your hair iron, wet hair, you're going to cause bubbles to form along the hair shaft, which will make it very brittle and cause it to break and fall out. So I don't like heat sources on wet hair. Wrapping your head appropriately so it's not traumatic to your hair. Avoiding tight hair styles where you're putting traction on the front or sides of your hair. So putting in a tight bun, ponytail, using hair extensions, all those things can cause traction alopecia and pull your hair out more readily. So just those little quick hair tips there to consider. If you're having scalp itching, inflammation, and you're having dandruff, definitely see your dermatologist to talk about how to deal with that because if you're having inflammation of your scalp, your hair won't be happy about that and you're going to have more hair loss. I treat seborrheic dermatitis, sebo psoriasis of the scalp all the time. If you're at home with just mild dandruff and it does itch mildly, you can consider shampoos like Head & Shoulders with zinc pyrithione, Celsin Blue with selenium sulfide, and Head & Shoulders also has selenium sulfide now in their select products, but their OG shampoos have zinc pyrithione. If you want to go for over-the-counter Nizoral or Ketoconazole 1%, I prescribe the 2% Ketoconazole. You can go right ahead and use the over-the-counter Ketoconazole first, try that out, and then other shampoos that are good for dry, itchy scalp would be T-Sal, which is, has salicylic acid, which helps exfoliate the scale from your scalp, and T-Gel by Neutrogena as well. That's um, very good for 
are using cold tar and decreasing the inflammation of the scalp, thus helping with itch. So those are great things to use before seeing your dermatologist trying that out. And then I can prescribe other things for your scalp if needed. So I hope this video is helpful. Hair loss has been such a big issue this past couple years during the pandemic. And so more than ever, we need to talk about hair loss and we're all in it together, guys. We're all trying to decrease stress. And I wish I could write a prescription on a stress fee lifestyle. As you guys know, that's impossible. Life is crazy. And so hope you guys are all doing well, finding ways to decrease your stress, eating a good balanced diet, getting enough vitamin D, getting enough iron and checking in with your doctor routinely to make sure your blood counts aren't dipping down low. You're not anemic because if you're anemic or iron deficient, that won't help the hair at all. You will lose hair if you're iron deficient. Also checking your thyroid, you know, having a low thyroid or high thyroid state can lead to hair loss, especially hypothyroidism. And so seeing your primary care doctor regularly is important and also eating that well-balanced diet because all of those vitamins, nutrients you need for healthy hair growth and getting enough sleep, which we all need to work on all the time, you know, getting enough seven plus hours of sleep is good for your skin and also your hair. All right, guys, please hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys for the next video. All right, peace.